Hello, my friends, and welcome back to KTB Creates. Today, I'm going to take you through 20 of my best DIYs of 2020. So let's go ahead and get started with number 20. So for this one, you're going to need five of these square signs that you can find at the Dollar Tree. These just happen to be Valentine's Day signs, but they do have this shape uh, throughout the year, so you should be able to find them. We are going to start out by hot gluing um, the edges of the signs together, and then we're going to go ahead in and reinforce all of that. When you flip it over to the back side, we're going to add some large uh, tongue, tongue depressor sticks to the backs of each of the sign. I also went in prior to doing that and I just added a strip of duct tape just for some extra added uh, security. And then once you're done with that, we are gonna take some poster board, we're gonna cut it to size to fit the back of the signs, and then I'm just gonna take some regular old school glue and I'm gonna spread that all over the back of the poster board and we're just gonna adhere that right to the back of the signs. This is gonna do two things. It does give it a little bit more stability, but it also um, covers up some of that ugliness. <laughs> you can also take some brown craft paper if you really want it to finish, finish it off really well and add that to the back of the sign as well. So once I had all five boards glued together, I did take some spackle and I spackled the holes and the lines between uh, where I glued. And then you wanna make sure you sand it really well and then wipe it down and you're all ready to paint it. Now for painting, I used my Waverly chalk paint in white and I gave it a good um, two coats of the, the chalk paint in white. Then once I was finished with the white chalk paint, I wanted to distress it a little bit, so I went in with a few different shades. I used the Waverly chalk paint in mineral and silver lining. And then to finish it off, I just went in with my antique uh, wax just to, um, like I said, just to distress it a little bit and give it some of that old, old world type texture to it. Uh, so that's what I am doing here, focusing on the edges more so than, you know, throughout the sign. And then you're all ready for your stencils. Now I created these stencils using my Silhouette Cameo and I just stuck them on the boards and then I'm gonna go in with my little pouncer brush and I'm just lightly dabbing on some black acrylic paint. Um, I didn't want it to be like super heavy, um, so I went in lightly with this. Um, that way you don't get any bleeding, and it does, like I said, it looks a little bit more distressed and old looking. So once that's all done, um, I tore off my vinyl, and then I decided to go back in and make some lines to make it look like more of like a shiplap look. Um, so that's what I'm doing here with a ruler and a pencil, and I'm just going in and kind of refiguring in those lines that were on the sign to begin with. And all I do with my um, pencil is I just rub, rub, rub it a little bit just to make it look a little bit worn and... Um, I just rub it a little bit just to make it a little bit worn and old looking. And I do that for the whole sign. And then once that's complete, your sign is all set to go. And this is a beautiful piece that you can use to add to, I use it on my front porch, um, but it is a covered front porch, so you don't wanna get this wet. Um, but it is a beautiful sign that you'd probably pay like 20 or $30 for, that you could re recreate for, I mean, with the paint and everything, all I really spent on this was maybe $6. Um, so very affordable and something easy, easy to do. And um, it looks beautiful. So 
So for those of you that aren't regular um, subscribers of mine, a welcome to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my family. So be sure to click that subscribe button and tap that bell so you see all my videos. Go ahead and like, comment, and share. I appreciate all of it. So let's get into the next one at number 19. This is going to be a simple um, spring wreath. Uh, it's very easy to do. I love making wreaths. And I actually like remake wreaths. So I'm, I'm often using uh, wreath forms that I already have. So this is one that I had. It's just a grapevine wreath. You can find them at any craft store. Um, I had the little letter is a painted letter that I had off of another wreath. And those you can buy at Hobby Lobby. They have a good selection of wooden letters. And then that little birdhouse is just um, a little birdhouse I found at the Dollar Tree. And all I do is I go in with a bunch of greenery and some spring florals, uh, some of my favorites just to um, dress it up. The greenery, um, I usually purchase all of that at Walmart and Dollar Tree. Uh, so just a little bit of flowers, some lavender, and some greenery. And I just arrange everything to my liking um, before I go hit go in and hot glue anything just to make sure that I'm happy with the way everything looks. Then once you're all set with that, you're going to um, go, go in and hot glue all your pieces. Um, you The nice thing with grapevine wreaths is that you don't have to hot glue a lot. You can kind of stick the stems in the, the grapevine and it, they should stay uh, pretty well. So I wanted to add just a little bit more color to this wreath. So I used some of the Dollar Tree little speckled eggs uh, just to add a little bit more color and fill in some of the holes. And that's really it. It was a very simple wreath to make and it looks absolutely beautiful and it's just a nice uh, muted pastel color uh, that adds a little splash to your spring decor. for the next one this is um, an idea that I got with an item that I purchased at a thrift store so it was cute but it was a little bit more of that primitive um, Americana type of decor that isn't quite my style so all I did was I went in and I disassembled everything um, and I just wanted that little ladder so what I did was I I made a little stain out of some burnt umber and a little bit of water just to warm up that wood a little bit and what I'm going to make out of this is a, a hanger for my jewelry for necklaces and bracelets and things like that um, and so you can actually make something like this with some cheap wood from Lowe's or Home Depot um, but it's a really different idea it's like a farmhouse type of a look um, and a way to store your jewelry. So once I steamed it, I got these little C hooks from Amazon and I am just measuring where I want to put them evenly um, throughout the bottom of the ladder and then on the top part I'm going to put a few as well to hang um, bracelets and things like that. So that's all I'm doing here is kind of marking everything off so I have, um, so I know where to screw in those, um, those hooks. And that's really it. It's a really easy project to do. Uh, this is what it looks like all finished. I do have a lot of jewelry. I wear a lot of fashion type jewelry uh, with my, um, you know, my full time job. So it's great because it hangs all my bracelets on the top. You could rest like small earrings and rings and things like that. And then obviously on the bottom you can hang like your long necklaces and things like that. So. I love this idea. I thought it was a really, really good idea and um, something where you could store everything. So on to the next project. This is um, another spring project that I did. Um, I just took two balls from the Dollar Tree, one larger soccer ball and then a small softball. And these are the foam balls. And I'm gonna make a bunny topiary out of this. 
and all I did was I went in and painted with some green acrylic paint. Um, you could probably use brown too, but just something to cover obviously the, the bright colors that, that are on the balls. Um, because we're going to go ahead and cover the balls with uh, the reindeer, the green reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree. So that's what I'm doing here. Once it's all painted and dried, you're just going to simply hot glue some reindeer moss all over those balls um, really good and get in any, any um, you know, missing spots that you see and just keep doing that until you're satisfied with the way it looks. Then once you're all done with that, I'm gonna, you're just going to go in and trim it um, with a pair of scissors just to cut off like the excess and form a nice uh, round uh, circle with it. And then all I did was I took a little bucket. I know they have something very similar at the Dollar Tree. I took one of the long skewers and I'm just measuring it to be able to fit through obviously the both balls and then stick in the in the bucket well um, so that you could secure it pretty well. Then I went in and stained that skewer with some antique wax just to um, finish that off a little bit. And then you're um, all set to put it together. Now for the ears, I took some pipe cleaner. Um, now if you have brown pipe cleaner, I guess that would work out better, but all I had on hand was some white. So I took some twine and I'm just twisting twine around two pieces of um, pipe cleaner. And that's just gonna, that's what you're gonna make the ears with. So it's a little bit of a tedious product, but it works out well. And then all you're gonna do is position them in the smaller um, ball and kind of bend them to, to make them look like ears. And then I also hot glued the, the ends in as well, just for extra security. Now to make sure it stays in the bucket really well, you're gonna to wanna to add some uh, foam floral foam to the bottom and then secure it with um, adding a bunch of the rocks from the Dollar Tree in the bucket as well. Um, now I wasn't quite happy with the way the ears looked. I wanted to add a little bit more texture to them so I had this leftover yarn from a project a long time ago and it's kind of like a speckled off-white type of an, uh, yarn. So I just decided to go in and add that to the ears. Um, and I spaced it out uh, so that you could still see the brown twine, but I felt like it just added um, just a little bit more fun and whimsy to it uh, and made the ears stand out a little bit more. So I just hot glued the bottom piece to the foam ball and then I just went in and twisted it around the ears and I'm, I was happy with the way that looked. I liked it a little bit better than just the plain um, twine ears. And then to finish it all off, I took some of that yarn and then two pieces of twine and I just went ahead and made a simple bow uh, around the bunny's neck um, above the second ball. And that's really it. And you're you're done with it. And then it's a beautiful decoration uh, for inside your, ho your home for uh, the springtime. And this was actually an inspiration piece. I, or I guess I would say a dupe because um, it's, it's, pretty similar to the one that I saw um, back in the day when Pier 1 was still open. Um, this was a decorating piece that I saw in the store and I thought it was adorable, um, but way too expensive and I thought I could definitely re recreate it for much cheaper. So um, this is what I came up with. So let me know what you think. OK, 
Okay, for the next one, this is definitely one of my favorites. I love the way this all turned out. So I am creating a, um, a decorative piece for my master bedroom. So all I am using is embroidery hoops and some floral stems. So this is a large embroidery hoop. I don't know if it's a quilting hoop. Some Someone should let me know if they know what this is used for because I never saw one this large. Uh, but I found this at a thrift store. So I'm using one large one and then I'm going to use one medium size embroidery hoop and one smaller size. I can't remember the inches on this, um, but I will put the original video in the description box. So if you want the details on all of it, I will definitely go ahead and put all of the original videos to all of these DIYs in the description box in case you want it to uh, go check those videos out. So all I'm gonna do is arrange, um, I decided to just use some eucalyptus and some peonies. I absolutely love peonies, they're beautiful. I think I bought these at Walmart. Um, so all I'm doing here is, re is arranging everything. I like to use my, reuse my floral and things like that when I like to change things out. So I try not to apply too much hot glue. So I am securing it all with my floral wire. Um, and you know, I'm just kind of laying everything out until I'm happy with the way everything looks. If you didn't want this to be as feminine, if you're gonna, you know, use it for a master bedroom, uh, my husband didn't care, <laughs> so I was fine with doing this. But you could just use a bunch of different greenery, like eucalyptus and um, I don't know, some lamb's ear and just different types of greenery, um, and just take out the floral, the floral aspect of it but I love the way it looks. I think it's just a beautiful, it's a light and airy kind of touch um, and it's not too much. So that's all I'm doing here is kind of arranging everything. And then for the next step, I just took the, a medium sized embroidery hoop and I split it in two. So you have two circles and then the smaller one with two circles. And I want it to match the smaller one and the medium sized one. So that's all I'm doing here is kind of arranging the flowers and the greenery to kind of mimic um, each other. And and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm obviously gonna um, wire them all together and hot glue what I need to, and then you're all good to go. Um, now, for the decorative piece, I did use a long birch log um, that a neighbor had that we cut down. Um, so you can use any type of wood. You can get wood and kind of like antique it if you want it to hang it from there. But how beautiful does this look? Um, I absolutely love it. I just hung the hoops with some lace ribbon and like I said, on that birch log. And this is the focal point above our bed in our master bedroom. And I am just, I'm so thrilled with the way it looks. It's just very different and unexpected, um, but beautiful at the same time. Uh, so definitely let me know what you think about this one. And if you've been around for quite a while, you know that I like to play that game and I love to hear from my subscribers. So tell me what your favorite one is. Of all of 20 of these, what is your favorite? Um, cause that helps me kind of plan, uh, what I'm going to do in the future. Cause I know what you guys, uh, then like to see. So for this next one, we are going to jump on over to some patriotic decor. And again, this was, um, something that I recreated from Pinterest, but I love taking items that you see from Pinterest and recreating them with dollar tree items, uh, and not spend, you know, as much. So all I'm doing here is deepening up my um, blue acrylic paint to more of a navy. And I had these flip flops that you can find in um, the Dollar Tree around the summertime. And I'm gonna paint one in the navy paint. And then the other one we're gonna paint in um, white. And then we're gonna do some uh, red stripes on the other one. And it is gonna take about two or three coats with the acrylic paint. You'll see the acrylic paint. Um, and that's why often our cra us crafters love the chalk paint because it's so much thicker. Um, you don't need as many coats of the chalk paint as you do when you're using acrylic paint. So once you're done with that, um, I went ahead back in and I penciled out where the little straps for the flip flops goes um, because I'm gonna paint that like a different brown or a different color. 
Um, so that's all I'm doing here. And then <clears throat> you're going to go in and tape off your stripes for your red and white stripes. So that's all I'm doing here. And I'm just using some painter's tape. Uh, I believe this is like a one inch. Yeah, this is a one inch painter's tape. And I'm just using, you know, the one to mark the space. And that's how I'm creating my stripes. And then I did the same thing with the red paint. I kind of deepened it up a little bit and I'm going to paint uh, the stripes in red. And again, you're gonna do two or three coats of that as well. You're gonna skip around where the, um, the little strap of the sandal is because I'll show you um, shortly how we're gonna paint those. And that took me a little bit of time to decide what I was gonna do with that. I was gonna originally leave them white, but I just didn't like the way it looked. I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I wanted a little bit more texture or color variation in it. So I did go ahead and paint the straps more of a brown color. So that's what I'm gonna show you here. So I kind of went in and started out with like a burnt umber and I wanted, the idea was I wanted to make it look like more like, um, like a straw texture. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, what I, what I was envisioning. So when I, when I like to do more of like a wood straw type texture, I always use burnt umber, um, a caramel, caramel color and mocha color from apple barrel paint, um, to create that. So I go in with my base of my burnt umber and I cover everything well with that. Then while everything is is still wet, I usually go in with my other shades. Now here I did it a little bit differently. I let everything dry, but you'll see as I continue painting, the, the real effect of it happens when everything is, is still wet because you're kind of blending in all the different shades. Um, <clears throat> and that can only happen when, when the paint is wet. So. I'll let you watch me do that here. And then for um, a little decoration for the sandal, you're gonna, I'm gonna make a um, twine bow. So I just kind of looped a bunch of twine. I made like two different bows with it and I just hot glued it together. Um, it's kind of hard to describe how to do it, but you see what I'm doing here. And then you just spread out the twine and it kind of looks like a little flower. So I just love the way that that looked. And then I just hot glue them right on the flip flops. And then I embellished it a little bit with some little, um, sparkly pearl stickers that I had uh, left over in my stash. Now this, I love the way that this looks. And then I just hot glue two of the flip flops together. Now what's funny is when I originally did this, they said, that, you know, everybody commented saying that I have two of the two left flip flops. <laughs> I totally didn't realize that. So you could flip over the one to make it look like a, a right shoe would, but um, didn't realize that while I was doing it. but. Everybody pointed that out to me. But anyways, I love the way this looks. It's such a cute little um, decorative piece. I added, you see, I added some white stars that I cut from my um, vinyl machine to the blue flip flop. And it's just a cute little door hanger or anything to kind of decorate with patriotic decor uh, for the summer months. And I love the way this came out. On to the next one. We are going to skip on over to some fall decor for this one. I love the way this turned out. I love these little um, wood houses that you could get at the Dollar Tree. Um, when these became available, I bought a whole box of them online because I'm obsessed with them. You could do so much with them. So you'll see all I was doing here is I took some cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree and I cut that out to, we're gonna put them in the back of the houses um, and we're gonna make them look like some galvanized metal. So I cut them out accordingly and now I'm gonna go in and paint uh, the wood around the house and the front of the houses 
And then I did edge around the inside of the houses just to make sure you can't see any of that, any of that colored paper once you put the metal in. And then I went in and I distressed it a little bit by dry brushing some uh, Waverly Antique Wax on all of the white pieces that we painted. So for the cookie sheets and doing the galvanized metal, um, you'll see I do a lot of this on my channel. I just love the way that this looks. So all I do is I take a makeup sponge and I just use um, a white chalk paint. I use a gray um, acrylic paint and then a metallic silver acrylic paint. And that's kind of how I create my galvanized metal. I know everybody kind of has a different um, method to it. Uh, but that's what I feel works best for me. And I, oh, I also use a, the Waverly um, Elephant, so it's like a darker gray as well too, just to give it some different variation. So that's all I did here and showed you how that looked. Then once you're done with that, I went in and I wanted to kind of add some texture to the edges of it. So I just wanted to give it more of like a rust, a worn look. So I just went in with my Waverly Antique Wax around the edges of it and I did that. Then you're all set to glue everything together. I love using my Gorilla Glue um, and all I did was start out by gluing two of the houses together sideways like that. And then I glued the other two together and once they were dry, then I glued the four pieces together. So you'll see in the next slide how that all looks when they're all together. So I wanted to put um, the letters fall on these signs. So I took the stickers from the Dollar Tree and I um, kind of wanted to make them look a little bit worn. So I just, uh, I'm just dry brushing some white acrylic paint on the letters that I'm gonna use to spell out fall. And then you're ready to go ahead and stick them right on your sign. Now this won't stay that well because I did paint them. So I did go in and spray it with a um, clear sealer or you could Mod, Pod, Mod Podge it if you'd really like to do that um, just to make sure everything stays put. And then you're just ready to decorate. So I just took some different um, picks and things like that that I had uh, laying around in my stash just to add some interest to the sign in different places uh, and dress it up a little bit. Uh, and it's such a cute way to, you know, dress up your home for fall. I love decorating for the fall. It's probably my favorite holiday or season, I guess, um, to decorate for other than uh, the Christmas season. So I just love the colors and everything. So this is just a cute piece and a different way to use those houses to, um, to make something beautiful for your home. And this is what it looks like when it's all finished. Okay, for the next one, we are gonna stay in the fall season here and we're gonna do another fall project. So you just need one of these long rectangular signs. They have these at the Dollar Tree pretty much year round for all the seasons. Um, so any kind will do. And you wanna take off that piece that says happy fall and sand it down because it does have some glitter texture on it. And we're gonna paint that in um, white, Waverly chalk paint in white. Now I took some of this cork board um, stickers that you can find at the Dollar Tree and that is just gonna be your front piece. Again, it's just a different look um, to add a little bit of texture to um, your decor instead of just painting everything. So that's all I'm doing here is sticking that on your sign and then, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and decorate from there. And Honestly, this stuff sticks really well. You'll see I had to like kind of reposition it a little bit. Um, 
So it really does stick in place really well if you're going to use this for different projects or to even use it as corkboard. Um, it's really good. So once you're done with that, um, you are going to, we're going to use one of these burlap uh, leaves that you can find during the fall season as your, as the A in fall. And then I'm going to create the other letters using my vinyl cutting machine. So all I did here was I wanted to add a little bit of variation to the leaf. So I just went in with some Waverly antique wax um, and just kind of highlighted around the edges just to make it a little bit more worn, worn looking. <laughs> um, and then you're going to cut off the stem as well. So the top piece there, I just added my vinyl lettering. That's going to say happy. And then you're going to stick your vinyl letters on along with your leaf to spell out fall. And again, this one is super easy to do. It does. It takes like five minutes to kind of put it all together because you're not doing a lot of painting. Um, and you can use the stickers at the Dollar Tree too if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine. I just added some twine at the top and the bottom just to give it a little bit more interest. And this is what it looks like. Um, you can use this inside. I used it on my covered porch um, for decoration for the fall. Um, but it's a really easy piece to do and it looks great. Okay, on to the next one. This is gonna be another thrift uh, flip. This was actually a mirror um, that my sister had given me. So um, I, I loved it. She wasn't using it. It's beautiful. Yes, it's a beautiful solid wood piece, but I am gonna paint it. And I'm actually gonna use this as a decor piece in my master bedroom as well. Uh, so I love the way it's like a worn, more of a worn, dirty type looking glass. And all I really went in and did with this piece is I lightly dry brushed um, different shades of, I used a white paint and I used uh, some, I think elephant from Waverly and some silver lining uh, just to add some texture to it. I focused a little bit more on like the corners where, where I did a little bit more painting than the other parts of the mirror until I was satisfied with the way it looked. And then I just went in with some floral uh, decoration and some burlap on the corner of the mirror just to dress it up a little bit. So I just took some lamb's ear and different greenery along with a little bit of lavender and things like that. And I took some old burlap ribbon that I had that I wasn't using and created a cute little bow with it. And I'm really just hot gluing everything right in the corner until I am satisfied with the way it looks. It's a very simple project to do um, and it looks beautiful and I have I just have it lay uh, kind of leaning against another mirror in my master bedroom so it came out beautiful
So this, for this next DIY, this is another dupe. Um, so this was a sign that I saw at, I can't remember if it's Wayfair or Ballard Designs, um, but it's, it's a home sign. And I am gonna recreate this using Dollar Tree items. So I just took a regular white uh, foam board and I didn't cut it down or anything. I'm using that exact size that the foam board comes in and I'm just dry brushing uh, different colors. So I use mineral and silver lining and dry brush that all over the, um, the foam board. So that's what it looks like when you're finished dry brushing. Now I am measuring where I'm gonna add a wooden border. I used some wood that I purchased from Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, that's the only piece, the only part that you're gonna get from you know, something that's not Dollar Tree. Um, so that's all I'm doing here. I'm kind of deciding where those the wood trim is gonna go. And then I'm measuring out my letters and I'm marking that in pencil. So we're gonna spell out the word home. Um, if I could find the original picture, I'll definitely add it up, up here so you could see um, what I'm mimicking. But as I said before, I will link all of the original videos that I did on these in the description box below. So if you liked a certain project and you really wanna get more detailed information on it, you can go ahead and watch those videos. Next, you're just gonna need some of that poly cord in black from the Dollar Tree. And you're just gonna go ahead and cut that uh, according to your different letters. And we're gonna hot glue that onto the board. Now, I will say this is where having a detail hot glue gun really comes in handy. I didn't at this time, um, but it's definitely, you definitely wanna use a detailed hot glue gun so there isn't too much um, glue kind of seeping out the edges, but I kind of just like wiped that away with my, with my fingers. Um, so that's all I'm doing here is just, you're gonna adhere it with some hot glue and that's how you're gonna create your letters. And then like I said, I created my frame using some wood and I went ahead and stained it. I watered down some gray um, acrylic paint and created kind of like a gray stain for that. So that's what I'm doing here. And then once that's all dry, you're all set to go ahead and glue your frame right on top of your foam board. And for that, I like to use my Gorilla um, Clear Glue. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just applying that around uh, the frame and then you're gonna go ahead and flip it over and stick it right on the frame and your sign is complete. And I absolutely love the way this came. I can't remember what the original sign cost, but it was definitely way more than, you know, maybe what, $3 I spent on making this. Um, so I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
So for the next one, we're going to switch back to a fall um, decor piece again. And I am just going to take off the little bows that you get on these little wooden pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. So you're going to need, I used four of them um, and I'm personalizing them. So you'll see why I used four. And then you're going to take some scrapbook paper. I get mine at the Hobby Lobby and you're just going to measure that uh, according to the size of the pumpkins. Once you have that all figured out, you're gonna go ahead and paint your pumpkins in any kind of orange paint, whatever you have. Um, I just used something I had on hand, some acrylic paint. So using acrylic paint, you're gonna have to do like, I think three or four coats of this. Um, you can leave the one side plain because that's where we're gonna put the scrapbook paper. Uh, so I'm just doing, that's what I'm doing here, painting all the edges and the back of the pumpkins. Now, I personalize these. You can do the same whether you're using like a stamp set or some stickers from the Dollar Tree. I personalize mine using my vinyl cutting machine, uh, but it's something that you can easily uh, recreate as well. And then I took one of the little wooden houses. I'm gonna pop out the back and apply some scrapbook paper to the back of that piece. Uh, so that's all I am doing here. And then so I was just kind of deciding which scrap of paper I was going to use. I ended up going with um, the one you see here and we are just going to stain the outside wooden pieces of the house just to give it a finished look and I love using my Waverly antique wax for uh, a stain for a nice quick stain easy easy to use uh, so that's all I'm doing here and then you're just gonna go ahead and glue your scrapbook paper onto the back of the house and for that I just use a simple glue stick it's the easiest way to uh, apply that And then I just used some hot glue to put my house back together and you'll see in the finished uh, video I personalized it with welcome to our patch and then I put um, my friends names her family and her kids uh, names on the pumpkins so you can personalize it however you see fit um, and use however many pumpkins as you want to create uh, a family if that's what you're you choose to do and then I dressed up the house with a little bit of um, the little pumpkin stickers that you can get at the Dollar Tree as well. So now we're gonna jump into some Christmas decor. Uh, so for this project is again, recreating something that I saw on Pinterest using Dollar Tree items. So you're gonna need three of those rectangular signs that you can find at the Dollar Tree all year. You're gonna glue the three of them together. And then I just took some um, tongue depressor sticks and I glued them to the back of the sign as well for um, extra security. Then you're going to flip it over and we're going to paint the front of it. Now you could add some brown craft paper to the back of this if you want it to gift this to somebody or really finish it off um, so that you don't see. So this isn't the back that you see. <laughs> so just a little tip for you. 
if that's what you're looking to do with your piece. But what we're creating here is a sign to hang Christmas cards. Now, this is a Christmas themed uh, project, but you can actually recreate this and use it all year round, um, just like for to-do lists or calendars or different things like that to, to help organize yourself. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna create, um, the inspiration piece that I saw was using, they obviously used real wood. Uh, so what I wanted to do here was go in and create the look of real wood or like paneling type wood. So all I did was I went in with, this is, um, I believe I used my Waverly Antique Wax here um, and just went in and kind of sporadically spread this across the three boards. You don't have to get like perfect coverage with it because you do want some of that brown um, particle board kind of peeking through because it helps to add to the texture. And then I went in with some different acrylic paint and I'm dry brushing that on with the brush I love to use for dry brushing. So I do that in, um, it's a mocha color and a caramel color from Apple Barrel Paint. And that's what I always use to create my faux wood type of a finish. So all I'm doing again is just dry brushing all the different shades mixed in. Uh, and the key here is to not let anything dry between coats because you want it to kind of blend in um, perfectly. So I'll just keep adding these pieces until I'm kind of happy with the way it looks visually. Uh, and, um, and then you're good to go and you're all set to decorate. So to um, adhere your pieces to hang your cards from, you're, all you're gonna need is some twine and we're gonna hot glue that to the back of the, the frame and then we're just gonna wrap it around tightly around um, the front and you're just gonna keep doing that down the whole sign. You do wanna leave a little bit of a gap at the top because um, we're gonna add a little um, sticker at the top along with, we're gonna dress it up with some floral. So you do want to do that, but then you're just going to wrap your twine around um, in a zigzag type of a formation and just hot glue the top and the bottom. And then I used some of the mini, um, the mini uh, clothespin, I, I think I got them at the Dollar Tree, you can also get them at any craft store. They are a little flimsy though, I will say. So if you can get like a sturdier type at probably the craft store. Um, or a little bit bigger uh, clothespin, uh, that would probably work better because I did break quite a few of these. Uh, but you'll see, you'll see what you'll see the size that I'm using now. Um, but they're just they're that super mini tiny size, and I believe I got them at the Dollar Tree. So you're just going to stick them all over that twine, and that's what's going to hold your Christmas cards on. And then to dress up the top, I'm gonna add a little sticker that I created on my machine, and it says the Merry Mail. And then at the top, we're gonna just hot glue some floral and a hot glue some twine to the top as a hanger. Uh, and that's really it. It's pretty simple to do. It really didn't take a lot of time other than the painting um, and allowing that to dry. It's a pretty simple project. And like I said, it's so cute. Uh, you can use this as something in your home um, all year round, like I said, just to organize and hang. You can even use it as like a display for like your children's artwork and things like that. That would be a cute, a cute way to use it, but definitely a very versatile piece. So all I'm doing here is finishing it off with some beautiful Christmas type floral and you're all set. Let me know what you think about this one. This is one of my favorites. I love this one.
this next one is also some Christmas decor. Uh, you can actually use this probably um, throughout the winter, depending on what um, scrapbook paper you use for the back of it. So all I'm doing here is again, using three different sizes of those little house shapes. And I went in and painted all of the wood pieces and the front of the house in my um, acrylic or my chalk paint in white. So that's all I'm doing here. And then all we're gonna do is cut out some scrapbook paper to put along the back of the house. And my scrapbook, scrapbook paper <laughs> says Merry Christmas on it. But like I said, if you just use like a snowflake paper or something plain, you could actually use these uh, throughout the whole winter season if you like to kind of keep some decorations up um, throughout the winter. So now I'm just gonna apply my scrapbook paper to the back of the houses, just using a regular glue stick. Um, I did choose this paper because it was, you know, red, um, and the decorations we're gonna put in it are white, so I wanted something that kind of made that, the white decorations stand out a bit. Um, so that is why I chose uh, the red. And then we're gonna take, um, I love these decorations. These are always at the Dollar Tree around Christmas time. So you definitely wanna get there when they first start putting everything out because they're really hard to find after that. But they're the white um, branch trees and then the little white deer and I did one white, white uh, church. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is really cut the tree, the tips of the trees to fit the houses. And just it's just to make it look like more of like a 3D effect. So I put the deer on the inside of the house and then the tree on kind of the outside border of the house. Like I said, just to make it look like more like a 3D look. This is a very easy project to do. It's really just painting the houses and scrapbook paper and that's, that's kind of all you're doing. So I'm just kind of um, applying the trees in, in the way that I like, trying to decide what I was gonna use, um, but I decided to stick with uh, the trees because uh, I love the way they look. So you just have to cut off the tips, which are easy to do. It's a nice plastic that they're made from um, just to make them fit into the houses. And this is what they look like all finished. I did go ahead and dress this up with a little bit of that um, buffalo snow. Uh, so you could leave them plain without the snow. I just thought it added a, some texture and a cute little look with that. You can also use um, some Epsom, Epsom salts and Mod Podge and kind of do like a sparkly type snow um, if you want it to do that as well. So this is optional, just something different to dress it up a little bit, but I absolutely love the way these came. And for this DIY, we're gonna do one more holiday um, type decor piece using, again, a rectangular sign from the Dollar Tree. You're gonna paint one side in white uh, and you're gonna wanna do like two or three good coats of this paint. And then we are gonna go ahead and kind of make it look like, um, I guess, shiplap, like a old piece of shiplap wood kind of a look. <laughs> And you'll see what I mean uh, in the next clip. So I'm going to create some lines to make it look like different um, size pieces of wood. 
and I'm just doing that with a simple pencil and a ruler and then I am going to go in with um, some paint. I do usually rub it with my finger just to make it look like blend in and make it look old, um, but I wanted it to be a little bit more um, noticeable, so I did end up going in with a little bit of paint in um, a not so even, uh, you know, type of a line with some black and gray um, acrylic paint. I also wanted to create some little uh, nails or bolts kind of a thing on the edge. Um, so that's all I'm doing here with a pencil. Uh, not a super, you know, perfect circle. Um, just something different to make it look like uh, there was uh, nails there. And then I went ahead and created a little wreath just using some greenery and this is berries that I got from um, the Dollar Tree and I just went ahead and twisted it all together and created a little wreath and this is where I went in and decided to kind of um, bring out those lines a little bit more I didn't like the way you couldn't see it as well uh, so that's all I'm doing here and I did you know make darken up those little um, bolt bolts or nails a little bit more too so then I decided to go in with, um, the Dollar Tree has this chalkboard um, vinyl, and then I created a stencil that says believe, or not a stencil, I created some stickers that says uh, believe on it. So I just cut out a piece of the chalkboard vinyl to fit inside that wider you know, piece of, of faux wood there, and that's that I just stuck right on and then I'm going to put the word believe going vertically uh, down that black strip. And now you're all set to hang your little wreath. So here I'm just kind of measuring where I want my wreath to hang. This is ribbon that I purchased at Michael year, years ago. Um, so I'm just cutting it accordingly. And then I decided that that little black piece needed a little bit more. I wasn't happy with the way it looked. So I'm finishing the edges with some white um, chalk pen and I'm just doing kind of like a stitching edge around it. And I think that's the perfect touch to finish it off. So now you're ready to hot glue your wreath and ribbon right to the back of your sign. And then I, all I did was created a simple little bow to hang right on the top there and hot glue that on and you are all finished with your sign. Uh, and again, this is like a beautiful, quick and easy decor piece uh, for the holiday. So for this next one, we're gonna create um, kind of like, you know how you see those wood round signs? That's kind of what I envisioned here, but it's a faux, you know, faux sign using Dollar Tree items. So I found this at the Dollar Tree in the kitchen section. Uh, and it's just basically a big sticker that you could stick um, behind your stove, I'm guessing is what it's used for. Um, but I just wanted that center circle with a little saying on it because I thought it was adorable. So all I'm doing is cutting out that circle. You're also going to need a piece of foam board because we're going to stick that right on the foam board and that's going to be your base for your faux wreath wood sign. Um, so that's all I'm doing here is sticking that right to the foam board. 
and you want to make sure that you apply a lot of pressure where the lines are just so that you get it nice and smooth and you can't see those lines when you're finished. And then all you're gonna do is take an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors and you're gonna cut around the edge of the sign of the foam board. Um, I will say scissors aren't the way to go. You definitely wanna use an X-Acto um, knife and a sharp blade. And then next I took these little eyeball um, balls that I found, I, have, I bought a bunch of them because I knew I'd be able to use them. You could use the ping pong balls from the Dollar Tree as well. Uh, but all I'm doing here is taking some a floral wire and a, a long needle and I am just going to thread these onto the wire and we're gonna this is gonna create um, kind of like the faux wooden balls that you would see around the edge of a wreath or frame or something like that so all you're gonna want to do with these is uh, there's one hole in the one edge so I'm just using my hot glue gun to melt another hole in the opposite end. And that's how we're gonna string all of the, the eyeballs. And then once that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and spray paint the, the balls with, um, I'd like to use my Rust-Oleum Ultra coverage in white um, because it's the best coverage. So you're just gonna go ahead and spray paint all of them just to get even white coverage. And then I went in and painted them with some antique wax um, to give them that wooden type finish. So this is what it looks like all together with, you know, you're just going to hot glue the wooden or the balls around the edge of it. And then you're ready to decorate the top of it. And I just went in with some eucalyptus. I made a pretty bow and some other picks, depending on the type of season we're in. Um, you can kind of arrange it however you want. And I just hot glued them all down and then your sign is all good to go. I also went in and dry brushed some white chalk paint across the letters on the sign, just to, again, make it look a little bit less like a foil piece and perfect. I wanted it to look more old, old world type style. So I love the way this came. And again, it's, you would never know by looking at it that it was created from poster board and a sticker and things like that. So. It definitely looks high-end and it's a beautiful um, decor piece to add to your collection. And you do want to make sure that you go ahead and once you're all finished and just apply a little bit extra hot glue just to make sure everything stays in place. And this is what the finished piece looks like. I think it's absolutely adorable. You'll have to let me know what you think. Um, I always love to hear from you, so let me know. definitely one of my more popular um, trash to treasure or upcycle type of uh, pieces that I did. Very simple. You just need one of these large Folgers coffee cans and it's a nice thick and sturdy hard plastic and I just went ahead in and with some um, chalk paint and painted everything. You definitely want to do like three or four coats of it to make sure you get your full coverage. And the top piece, we're gonna paint it to look like a faux wood, like canister lid. Uh, so I went in and painted the black white, and then you're gonna see a little bit later on what we do to it. And then I just took some lettering and I made a sticker that says this and that. Uh, you can use this for a lot of different storage pieces. I use it for the really the extra long glue sticks. I love the Gorilla glue sticks and they fit perfectly in here. So that's kind of what I use um, to store my glue sticks. So this looks so cute when it's finished. And now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I do my wood top. So as you know, in the previous projects, I like to create my faux wood with three different shades, 
using um, apple, apple barrel acrylic paint in burnt umber, mocha, and a caramel shade. And you're really just gonna go in and paint paint it all on. Um, you don't have to be neat about it. It's You want it to look like messier. You want it to look like faux wood. Um, the key here, obviously, like I said in previous projects, is to apply each color uh, while the previous color is still wet because you want it to all kind of blend together. So that's kind of all I'm doing here. So I will um, stop talking and I'll let you see how it all comes together. Then I took a wooden um, knob that I purchased from Amazon. I painted that as well, glued that to the top of the lid. And then as a finishing touch, I'm going in with some Mod Podge and I'm gonna Mod Podge everything because this will, the paint will chip off of it because it is just plastic. Um, another idea might be to spray paint the can with the Rust-Oleum Ultra White spray paint. That might stick a little bit better to the plastic but that's why I'm adding the Mod Podge layer to this, just to uh, make sure it doesn't chip, make sure your sticker stays on, um, and it did hold up rather nicely, so. So for this next project, you're going to use uh, four of the um, canvas type decor frames. They're small squares and I bought this stencil at, I believe, Walmart. Uh, so I'm just going to use that large stencil uh, just to create a, a neat little pattern on the back of the sign. So I started out by taking off all of the, um, the canvas. Sorry, I'm losing my words now, uh, but I took off all the canvas with my um, my uh, blade here, and you do want to go ahead and make sure that you get all of the canvas off. It's a little bit tricky to do. Uh, some of them came better than others or easier to remove than others, uh, but you definitely want to remove all of it because we're going to use um, the frames and we're going to actually paint them and then uh, adhere the canvas back to the back of the frame. So um, you'll see what I mean in on the upcoming clips. So here I'm going to go in and I am going to paint or stain the wood frames with my Waverly Antique Wax. So you're going to want to paint all four of them on front back sides all over. Now I went ahead in and I painted all of the canvas uh, with my Waverly uh, white chalk paint and you want to make sure you get full coverage so I think I did about two coats of that and I am actually gifting this to someone so I painted the sign the the 
outside of the sign that was already uh, done uh, because I didn't, you know, I wanted the, the back side to look more finished. So that's why I chose to do this. Uh, if you're just using it for yourself, you could obviously just um, leave the white on the back and use that. Uh, so that's just an explanation as to why I'm, I'm going through the trouble of painting uh, the finished side of the canvas. And then we're gonna take our uh, stencil and we're gonna we're gonna apply that to uh, the, each of the canvases and then I'm gonna go ahead in and paint now I messed this up a little bit and you'll see I went back in with some white chalk paint just to um, make it a little bit less a, a stand out a little bit less but you want to go in with your spouncer and really really lightly um, spounce in I'm using mineral um, chalk paint here uh, you don't want it like it doesn't have to be perfect uh, you'll see it doesn't look like I'm adding a lot of paint but when I pull off the stencil you definitely see that and I want it to kind of blend a little bit more into the background uh, so it does look beautiful but I did go ahead in here and I just dry brushed on some more of the white paint just to soften it up a little bit because we're gonna put letters on top of this and now you're ready to apply the wood frames back onto your canvas. So I decided to go ahead and do it this way. So I used hot glue. You could use Gorilla Glue if you wanted, um, you know, a real permanent finish, but this held up really nice. So you just want to be quick with it. So I am just applying that evenly and centering it right onto the canvas for all four of the frames. And then you're going to go ahead in with your X-Acto knife and you're just going to trim off the edges uh, where the canvas, you know, overlaps. And then once you're finished with that, you're all set to add your vinyl letters to it. I'm just using some brown um, vinyl and I'm going to use, I, I made the letters um, H, M, and E. And then for the O, you'll see we're just going to make a little green wreath out of um, some greenery that I purchased at Walmart. So I will let you see this uh, all come together.
for this DIY, again, something super simple to do, but yet so adorable and a neat little decorative piece. These are the large wooden wood slices from Arteza. Um, and they, I think they're awesome. You can use them for so many different things. So I just went ahead in and created um, a faux stain using burnt umber and some water. And that's all I'm doing here is staining uh, the front and the back. And all we're gonna do is make like a little pedestal, like a decorative um, pedestal using these wooden um, feet, I guess that you would, you would call them. Uh, balls of some sort. I got them at uh, through Amazon. So I'm just going to go ahead and stain them as well. And it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is glue them to the bottom of the wood slice and then you're going to decorate. You can leave it plain if that's what you choose to do. But I um, used this again as a gift and I went ahead and created a um, some final lettering for it with um, the person's initial. So that's what I am doing here, just applying that right to the center of it. And I think it's just so cute and, and unique uh, and something different that you can give as a gift. And then I did go ahead and seal the piece with some Mod Podge. So again, you see I had some trouble with some of the stickers staying. Oh, before I did that, I forgot. <laughs> I went ahead and aged it a little bit by dry brushing on some uh, white chalk paint onto the lettering just so it made it look a little bit more old world. And then I also added that to the edge of the bark. And then, like I started to say, you definitely want to go ahead in and seal the piece with whether it's like a, a clear um, spray paint that you use, uh, but I did go ahead in and sealed the piece with some Mod Podge to make sure that uh, the lettering stays put uh, so that you can, you know, you can use it for drinks or different things if you want to put on uh, a candle or something like that. And then also with these wood pieces, I Mod Podge the edge where the, the bark is because it will like crumple and kind of fall off. So I feel like if you go ahead in and use some Mod Podge and seal it, uh, it'll all stay together a little bit nicer. And that's it. It's a pretty simple, easy project to do, but yet um, you can make it personalized and use it for gifts and things like that. And I just thought it was so cute um, and simple. And here is the finished result. So this was such an easy project to do as well, and I definitely got so many um, rave reviews on it. I had to include this one. So I'm just taking a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna give it a good two or three coats of my uh, white chalk paint. And then it was time to decorate. So I made a little hello wording with my cameo, and I applied that to the bottom portion of the sign. And then I'm going to finish off the piece by using some of the um, nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to hot glue that right to the edge of the pizza pan. And then you're just going to go ahead and decorate with some greenery or floral. However, you know, you choose to decorate it with your color scheme. I wanted to keep it very neutral. Um, so I just went, in, went ahead in with some simple greenery and then I made um, some simple bows and I just applied that to the top and I applied a little um, piece of twine to the back of it so that you can hang it. You can use this as a um, wreath you know for your door or inside your house. Um, I ended up giving this to my sister who actually uses a little um, plate stand and just has it as a decorative piece uh, in her kitchen. So I think that's a, an adorable way to display it as well. So, and I love the way this piece came out.
And then lastly, what I think was my uh, most popular and probably one of my favorite DIYs of the year is this simple uh, sign that I made using the 16 inch round uh, plate. It's a plastic plate that you can find in the wedding section at the Dollar Tree. And I just painted that. I think I'm using plaster paint here uh, for this sign. And I just gave it a good um, two or three coats uh, to the sign in uh, the plaster color. Uh, so I took Waverly chalk paint and elephant and I just applied my painter's tape to where I wanted to tape off. And I'm just gonna paint that strip there with the um, gray paint. Then once I finished that, I went ahead in and dry brushed some of the plaster uh, paint onto that just to make it look a little bit more rustic. And then I painted, I ended up painting this in plaster because I only had white vinyl and I wanted it to be off-white. Um, so that's what I was doing there. And then I went ahead in with some nautical rope to finish off the edge of the plate. And as you can see, I just customized it. Um, this has all of my mother's grandchildren's names on it. Um, so it was a gift to her. And I just love the way that this turned out. I think it's adorable. You can customize it and do it any way that, that you think, um, if you wanted to do it as a gift. But I just love the way it looks. You would never guess again that it was from the Dollar Tree and only cost, you know, maybe $2 to make. Um, so again, it's, it's something very easy and simple and cost effective. So I hope you enjoyed this mega video with all 20 of my most popular DIYs from the year. Thank you so much for sticking around and enjoying all of this with me. Like I said, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. It will help my channel grow and I appreciate it so very much. I